Hello everyone, I am Manish Akrawal and thanks for watching Edupedia World videos. So in this session of chemical equilibrium, we will look at the thermodynamics of equilibrium. Okay. So let's start with the mathematical expression that what do we talk about when we talk about thermodynamics of equilibrium. Okay. So basically there is one important equation which we have to memorize alright and the others can be derived from there. Okay. So the equation goes as follows if you have a reversible chemical reaction okay, going from reactants to products where stoichiometry of reactants and products are given for the balanced chemical equation then we can define a term called change in Gibbs free energy of the system what is the system here the reversible reaction so delta G that is change in Gibbs free energy of the reaction is equal to delta G naught plus 2.303 RT log Q ok alright so here base of log is 10 alright so another way of writing the same equation is delta G naught plus 2 ok delta G naught plus RT ln Q ok and what is ln? ln means the base of log is E, okay, not 10. Alright, so this is the equation. Okay. So here delta G on the left hand side which we are calculating is the change in Gibbs free energy of your reaction. Whereas delta G naught is the same thing that is change in Gibbs free energy but under standard thermodynamic conditions. What are standard thermodynamic conditions? So when all the concentrations in aqueous solutions are equal to 1 molar or approximately 1 molar and all the partial pressures are equal to 1 bar or approximately 1 atm so they are standard thermodynamics conditions so under those concentrations the value of delta g is called delta g naught okay so here on the r is your universal gas constant 8.314 in si units t is temperature in kelvin and q is your reaction quotient represented in terms of active masses okay so q is the reaction quotient and rest everything is now known to us okay so you will study delta g in greater detail in thermodynamics chapter okay what delta g actually is and what else can we talk about it for now what you can understand is the change in gibbs free energy delta g over here it represents the maximum amount of useful work which you can obtain from a reversible process okay take any reversible process whether physical or chemical so the maximum amount of useful work which you can obtain from that process is equal to or is or its magnitude is calculated in terms of delta g okay so here delta g is the amount of useful work we can obtain from this reversible reaction when the reactants change to products okay so another thing about delta G is if delta G is positive for the forward reaction it will be negative for the backward reaction and vice versa okay so delta G for the forward reaction is just the negative of the delta G for the backward reaction the magnitude will be same obviously okay so why is that we'll look at it okay in the next slide see if you talk about the graph of G okay that is Gibbs free energy alright with the progress of reaction let's say that is time okay so the graph might look something like this okay this is when the reaction is over that is the reactants are completely converted to products and here you have initially reactants so this here represents Gibbs free energy of reactants this point here represents Gibbs free energy of products okay this y coordinate all right so Gibbs free energy moves like this like it's decreasing okay G Gibbs free energy is decreasing over here decreasing and even if you come from products to reactants you also see that Gibbs free energy is again decreasing alright so but the net 
gives free energy for the complete reaction okay can be seen as gp minus gr all right and here depending on whether gp is more or gr is more delta g can have positive negative values okay but see at this point okay what is this point okay at this point the rate of change of g okay that is at this point you can say dg okay is equal to zero that is gives free energy is not changing anymore all right so what is this point where gives free energy has stopped changing this is the position when equilibrium has been attained in your system okay so you have to memorize this that at equilibrium delta g becomes equal to zero okay or you can look at it from mathematical point of view that the slope of the curve is here zero that means dg by dt is zero okay so change in gibbs free energy is zero you can qualitatively understand it that if gibbs free energy change in gibbs free energy delta g represents the amount of useful work which you can obtain then at equilibrium things stop changing right the reaction is still taking place but there is no net change in concentrations there is no net change in rate of reactions so if there are no changes you cannot actually obtain any net work from your system right the useful work can only be obtained when there is some kind of change right like waterfall okay look at the waterfall it forms from a greater height to a lower height and hence we are able to rotate turbine using the kinetic energy of water so there is some change in the height of water because of which we are able to obtain work there so like that if the reaction has some changes okay which are there inside it okay some changes which are taking place only then we can obtain some amount of useful work hence at equilibrium you can say that delta g has to become equal to 0 okay so let's try to get a mathematical feel of what happens at equilibrium so we know that delta g is equal to delta g not plus rt ln q now at equilibrium we have seen that delta g will become equal to zero okay and at equilibrium q will become equal to k equilibrium reaction quotient is equal to equilibrium constant when the system is in the state of equilibrium so this gives us that the equation is 0 equals to delta g naught plus rt ln k equilibrium okay or in other words delta g naught is equal to minus rt ln k okay so if you want you can memorize this equation as well okay instead of der deriving it all the time because it is an important equation so here on the left hand side we don't have delta g anymore delta g is zero but delta g naught might not be zero right it can have any value depending on the standard conditions okay standard conditions and the value we get from there okay so delta g naught for any reaction is equal to minus rt ln q or minus 2.303 rt log q log k sorry ln k and log k okay so this is an important equation over here and this equation relates k equilibrium to thermodynamics okay in fact later on we'll study another equation okay in thermodynamics which says that delta g naught is also equal to delta h naught minus t delta s naught okay and if you this is valid for any reversible system so if if a reversible system is a chemical reaction a reversible chemical reaction then delta g naught is also equal to minus rt ln k okay so from here we can get the exact dependence of okay equating the two and we can get the exact dependence of k equilibrium on temperature all right so we get ln k is simply equal to minus delta h naught by rt okay plus delta s naught by r okay so from here you can mathematically decide even this equation is important not so much for your school exams but it is very important for j mains and j advanced and even medical competitive exams okay so please try and remember this equation if you can 
all right so ln k is equal to minus delta h naught by rt here delta h naught is change in enthalpy under standard conditions delta h naught is change in entropy of the system under standard conditions you will study all these terms in much more detail in the chapter of thermodynamics okay for now what you need to see over here is that change in temperature will change my right hand side and hence it will change the value of k given that delta h not is not equal to 0 if delta h not is equal to 0 ln k will simply become equal to delta h not by r and hence we say for a reaction for which delta h is 0 k is not dependent on temperature otherwise the dependence of k whether k will increase with temperature or decrease with temperature decrease with temperature will depend on whether delta h not is greater than 0 or is it less than 0 so if you can understand that you won't have to memorize whether for an exothermic reaction reaction will move forward or whether it will move in the backward direction or for endothermic if I increase the temperature in which direction will reaction move all right so you can directly get it from this expression how let's say the reaction is endothermic that means delta H naught okay under standard conditions if the reaction is endothermic then delta H naught is greater than 0 so now if I increase the temperature okay if I increase the temperature I am decreasing this ratio but it has a negative sign okay I, I am decreasing this ratio but this has a negative sign that means I am increasing the whole right hand side and if I am increasing the whole right hand side that means I am increasing the left hand side that is I am increasing the value of K equilibrium so if delta H naught is greater than 0 that is for an endothermic reaction in the forward direction increasing temperature results in increase of equilibrium constant and increase in equilibrium constant means amount of product okay upon completion amount of product will be much more than amount of reactant okay than what they were before so this means your reaction shifts in forward direction Okay. So, this is how you can use thermodynamics also to verify Lee Chatelier's principle. Alright. So, so, you can use a similar analysis okay, to get the exact mathematical value for K equilibrium at two different temperatures. Let's say at temperature T1, the K equilibrium has the value of K1 and at temperature T2, it has the value of K2. Okay. So, just put them inside the equations, we get that ln k1 is equal to minus delta h0 by rt1 plus delta s0 by r. Okay. So, this is your equation 1 and let us say equation 2 is ln k2. So, at temperature T2, the value of equilibrium constant has changed to k2. Okay. So, this is the second equation. Alright. So, assuming that delta H naught and delta S naught are not changing with change in temperature. Okay. We are assuming that they remain approximately constant. Okay. So, now what you need to do is you simply need to subtract the two equations. Let's subtract 2 minus. Okay. Let's do 2 minus 1. So, we get ln K2 by K1. Okay. When we subtract in log. Okay. The part inside the log gets divided. Right and this delta s naught by r delta s naught by r will get cancelled from the two equations what you will ultimately get is minus delta h naught by r into 1 by t2 minus 1 by t1 okay so this is how the k value changes with change in temperature okay you can even draw a graph of ln k okay ln k with 1 by temperature and that graph will be a straight line Alright, so this is more than enough for your school exams. Okay, a lot more actually. Some of the things are like this equation. You won't have to use it in your school exams. But for competitive exams, this is all very important. Okay, this thermodynamics of equilibrium is an important part of your syllabus. Alright, so with this topic, we have also finished the chapter of chemical equilibrium. Okay, there is nothing else left in it for you to study. So, the next chapter we'll do is ionic equilibrium okay it is a bit different from chemical equilibrium but uh, in essence it is an extension of the chemical equilibrium itself 
only thing is here all our reactions had molecules in it right complete molecules so those were molecular reactions in ionic equilibrium the next chapter instead of complete molecules we will often have ions on left and right hand side okay like cation and anions so hence those equations or those reactions are called ionic reactions okay so equilibrium in ionic reactions are is ionic equilibrium so that's what we'll study in the next chapter all right so until then take care and once again thanks for watching edupedia world videos